All right, move it on um, to our next uh, section. This is actually my, my favorite part of the program. So as part of this program, uh, each year we host abstract competitions open to our medical students, residents, fellows, and postdocs. This year, we received a very robust number of abstracts from our trainees. After careful consideration and review, we are pleased to announce our top 11 abstract winners. All the posters will be displayed uh, in person today from 12.50 to 1.30 uh, in the lobby right around the corner here. So I encourage everybody uh, in the audience today to take, to take time to, uh, to tour these posters. For the abstract winners, um, you know, we do have a prize for you. Uh, please meet with the R&E team after your poster exhibit uh, to claim your prize. <laughs> Featured uh, for today's meeting is Dr. Eric Chen. His abstract received the top score. He, this is a cancer-focused uh, study, but uh, it, it built no, no weight on how his uh, abstract was scored. Eric received his undergraduate de degree from Cal Berkeley and uh, his medical degree from, uh, from Case, so he's a hometown guy. He's currently a PGY4 in Radonk at uh, University Hospital Simon Cancer Center, and today he is going to tell us about how free hospital provided rice share service impact the radiation treatment completion rate for our cancer patients. <coughs> Eric. So I'd like to thank the UH Research and Education Institute, as well as UH Ventures, um, for the opportunity to speak about this very important topic about the impact of utilizing right share services um, on radiation therapy completion rates. Difficulty attaining reliable transportation for patients is an established barrier to healthcare. Transportation barriers are particularly important to address in radiation therapy because it is generally given over consecutive daily sessions over multiple weeks. Patients who miss scheduled radiation therapy appointments are at an increased risk for worse clinical outcomes, and this includes higher recurrence risk and lower overall survival. The proliferation of rideshare services such as Uber or Lyft has the potential to address this longstanding barrier to care. However, there's a paucity of available literature dealing with the impact of rideshare services in radiation oncology. And thus, the goal of our study was to evaluate the impact of rideshare services that were provided for free to our patients by our cancer center on radiation therapy completion rates. Between 2017 and 2022, we examined 63 patients who utilized free hospital provided rideshare services for 73 treatment courses. Based on the patient demographics, the, the typical patient um, utilizing rideshare service was 59, female, black or African American, not working, not married or partnered, high school educated or less, um, and insured with Medicaid. The first column of this figure shows the disease and treatment characteristics for all 73 treatment courses. The median treatment course duration was 36 days, and the median distance to the treatment facility was 6.4 miles. Interestingly, throughout their treatment course, patients only used rideshare services for a median of four times. And this suggests that for many patients, rideshare services are a supplement um, to, their, to other modes of transportation rather than a replacement. On average, 44.6% of each treatment course utilized rideshare services, and this was used to define low and, ride high, um, low and high rideshare utilization, which is in columns two and three, in requiring rideshare services less than or greater than 45% of their treatment course, respectively. Right -share utilized, um, high rideshare utilizers appear to have a different clinical profile than low rideshare utilizers, receiving significantly more palliative treatments. Most importantly, of the rideshare facilitated treatments, 100% were completed with an overall course completion rate of 97%. Two patients discontinued radiation therapy for reasons unrelated to transportation. This is significantly higher than the 84% treatment completion rate for patients who did not utilize rideshare um, services during the same time frame. 
Next, we conducted a revenue analysis to understand the financial impact of offering rideshare services to our patients. This revenue analysis was developed in consultation with the strategic planning and analytics department. Projected revenues were treated or were based on the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services fiscal year 2021 policy files and supporting documentation for the hospital outpatient prospective payment system. For all comers, and this is all comers, the average revenue per treatment course is over $16,000. The average ride share cost per treatment course is $235, and thus the total revenue facilitated by ride share is over $1,175,000. Um, of note, the median, sorry, of note, the median cost of each rideshare was just $13, which, suggest, which suggests that the, ride, uh, the revenue potentially facilitated by rideshare services is magnitudes greater than the rideshare cost. Finally, we conducted a geospatial analysis to examine the kinds of communities that patients utilizing rideshare services live in. Using the patient's home address of record, patients were geocoded to their census tract of record using ArcGIS. We examined several community-level variables of socioeconomic disadvantage and resource deprivation, um, comparing these variables between the communities patients utilizing rideshare services live in to Cuyahoga County overall or the city of Cleveland overall. The figure on the right shows the patients from Cuyahoga County who utilize rideshare services live in communities with significantly higher rates of households without vehicles. While the median percent of households without a vehicle in Cuyahoga County was 8.2%, it was 21.2% for the communities of residents for the patients utilizing rideshare services. This was 24.1% for the communities of patients who lived in the city of Cleveland and 20.4% for the city of Cleveland overall. The pattern of patients utilizing rideshare services coming from communities of higher socioeconomic disadvantage and resource deprivation was consistent across all of the community level variables examined. Um, this may reflect the relatively high proportion of patients who lived in the city of Cleveland, a highly uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged and resource deprived region within Cuyahoga County. In conclusion, the current study, being the largest to date to examine rideshare utilization in radiation oncology, demonstrates that patients who utilize hospital-provided rideshare services had significantly higher radiation therapy completion rates compared to those who did not utilize rideshare services. Patients who utilize hospital-provided rideshare services came from communities with relatively higher degrees of socioeconomic disadvantage and resource deprivation, and rideshare costs are modest relative to revenue that it potentially helps facilitate. And thus, free hospital provided rideshare services is economically feasible and may help enhance quality radiation care for those who come from resource limited communities. And with that, I want to thank all the members of the team who made this project possible. It was truly a multidisciplinary effort and could not have been possible again with everybody's help. Um, I want to especially thank Dr. Ashish Bhatt and Dr. Sarah Choi, the study principal investigators, who were instrumental in driving this project forward. Um, and with that, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. Questions? Dan? Yeah. Congratulations. It's really um, fantastic and, you know, makes it sound like we have an incredible opportunity. I guess the one question I would have for you is do people who undergo cancer infusion face the same obstacles, um, meaning that uh, transportation is a limitation and they're actually missing infusion? And then I guess finally the big question is, do you have any signals at all that cancer recurrence um, or survival is different in, in your population? Yeah, thank you so much for those questions. In this particular study, we only looked at radiation oncology, though we do know that rideshare services are provided in other departments as well. And that's going to be a great future direction in terms of working with, you know, multidisciplinary um, collaborators and folks from other departments to answer that question. Um, my hunch is probably yes. And the outcomes um, question, that's a really important one as well. We do know that while our data captures completion rates, we're not capturing treatment delays, we're not capturing, you know, all the other things that may be affecting clinical outcomes as well. And so that's also part of our future directions, looking at those clinical outcomes, recurrence risks, and hopefully overall survival. Eric, how are patients identified uh, to, to participate in this ratio program? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. So when a patient comes to clinic and they voice a concern about their transportation, um, we immediately alert social work who perform a psychosocial analysis um, as well as a financial analysis. So they're basically asking them, what are their resources? Do they have any family members? Do they have any friends who may be able to take them? What are the other possible resources that they can use, public transportation or whatnot? If patients are, um, if patients are really without any alternative forms of transportation, then they are eligible for this free hospital provided ride share service. Um, currently, we do not have any screenings in place, and I think that's also an area that we're working on, trying to identify prognostic factors or factors for you know, identifying these most at-risk populations who we may be able to find upfront. Eric, just, just a quick, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Eric, fantastic talk. Way to represent our department. Um, Quick question, um, and to kind of piggyback on Dr. Pan's question, do you think um, our patient population would benefit? Do uh, actually, did you look at um, uh, how many patients are kind of aware of rideshare services, and the kind of barrier to like asking for rideshare services? I know some patients may feel like the stigmata of uh, you know low income and uh, low socioeconomic status. Yeah, that's a really good question as well. And again, part of our future directions would be to conduct survey research into finding out the reasons or maybe the barriers that patients might not be able to have transportation barriers, or sorry, uh, ride share to, or transportation to treatments. Um, so that's an area that we're, we're definitely actively looking in. And I, just to follow up on that, I think ultimately the goal would be to do screening on all patients when they come in for financial toxicity and social uh, barriers to receiving care because I think here this was self-identification so uh, proactively looking for patients and then I'll put a I'll put a uh, you know a thank you out to the Geller family as well as to the Masetta family the Nature Stone people because they provide money on an annual basis to transport patients patients to the hospital it's not free you know and nothing is free and these uh, generous families do provide the support to get these patients to the hospital for their treatments. Uh, ni nice job, actually, and nice presentation. Very interesting. Uh, I, I just want to say, you know, I've been using uh, this method, like mostly Lyft, uh, for all HIV and COVID patients. And I can tell you that the studies are, you know, definitely can afford that funding, most studies. So I would really urge everybody to think about it for clinical research because people tend to stay on study. They, they say yes to enrollment much faster when you say you don't have to worry about coming here we will get you here so this really works for research overall but very very nice work actually thank you so much and then you know sort of extend that and raise just really reimbursement for parking for clinical trial patients as well right oh sure sure get more to donate. yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right all right, thank you.